Hey guys, my name is Nick Valeski with the Utah State University Extension's Integrated Pest Management Program. So we're in Halloween season and carving pumpkin is a super fun activity that comes in all levels of skill, from easy to hard and just different levels of difficulty. So carving pumpkins is fun, but eventually our carved creations can start to rot and mold and I'm going to tell you guys how you can prevent that and why that happens to begin with. So molds are tiny microfungal organisms that have the ability to live anywhere. They release tiny lightweight spores that can move through the air and look for living organic matter like our pumpkins to live and grow on. So these molds within our jack-o'-lanterns, they can range from black to white to gray and they can have a fuzzy appearance. And they can cause our jack-o'-lanterns to kind of shrivel and shrink and become distorted like this. So consider these methods when you're carving your pumpkin to help preserve it. Before you cut into your pumpkin, make sure it's clean and sterilized. Also make sure the knife, the saw, or the scoop you're using, whether it's from your kitchen or a kit you buy, is sanitized before you cut into the pumpkin. So when you're cleaning out your pumpkin, you want to do your best to remove all of the inside. This will help reduce the surface area for possible mold and fungal growth. So one of the best ways to preserve the pumpkin is to dip it into a pool of water with a 10% bleach solution. And what this does is it'll kill any spores or microorganisms that are on the pumpkin and help prevent new ones from forming. So I usually leave it in there for about 10 minutes or so. Some people leave it longer, shorter. It just depends. Another option is to have a spray bottle of bleach just to spray on the pumpkin when you're done. So when we want to light our jack-o'-lantern up, it's better to use like an electric light or a glow stick instead of a candle. Candles are cool, but what that does is it causes this pumpkin to almost cook on the inside, which can again make it more susceptible to mold. So I wanted to see how well these methods really worked. So two weeks ago, I carved six pumpkins. Three of them were outdoors for those two weeks, and the other three were indoors during the two weeks. And for each set, I had one pink pumpkin that didn't have any treatment. I had one pumpkin that did the bleach solution I just showed you, and then one set of the pumpkins had the petroleum jelly. So I'm gonna show you guys kind of the results of those now. So the most successful pumpkin that I found was the one that we kept indoors and also treated with the bleach solution. This one you can see has very minimal mold growth and it still has pretty good shape and form, just a little bit of shrinkage. This one didn't fare as well. This was our indoor pumpkin and it didn't have any treatment. So you can see there's a little bit of rot going on, especially on the inside. We got some mold growth and a lot of shrinkage, especially on the carved part. The next one was our indoor pumpkin, which was treated with petroleum jelly. And the petroleum jelly did an excellent job of sealing it and keeping the moisture in. But because of that excess moisture, there was a lot of rot happening. So you can see a lot of mold growth here, and especially on the inside, where we had the most mold growth overall. So for the outdoor pumpkins, they didn't do as well. The pumpkin that was treated with petroleum jelly, again, did a good job of sealing the moisture in, but because of that, it allowed for a lot of growth. Another problem with the outdoor pumpkins is when the weather freezes, that causes the pumpkin to freeze, and then it thaws out the next day, which can be really destructive to the flesh. The pumpkin that was treated with bleach lasted a little bit longer with minimal mold growth, but again, the weather caused the pumpkin to shrink a lot faster compared to the indoor one. Finally, the control pumpkin without any treatment had a lot of mold growth and shrunk probably the most. So these are representative samples of the different mold growth we had on all the jack-o'-lanterns. There's a lot of interior molds, but some of the most common families include Cladosporium, Penicillium, Aspergillus, Altenaria, Fusarium, Rhizopus, Mucar, 
trichoderma, and then lastly, Didamella broninae, which is the fungus that causes the stemmy, stem, gummy stem blight disease that we see in our commercial pumpkin fields. If you guys have any questions on molds and mildews, check out our Utah Pest fact sheets on information about them in your interior living environments and just how to safely handle them. And if you guys have any further questions, you can feel free to contact our lab through USU Extension, the Utah Plant Pest Diagnostic Lab.